Hello, Rick here with another Star Trek bestiary, looking at the non-corporeal Komar, as seen in Series 1 of Voyager. The Komar were a sentient species that pose a danger to passing ships and anyone who gets too close to their habitat. They were encountered early on in the Delta Quadrant, placing them near Kazon space, and resided within a dark matter nebula. Such nebula are collections of the difficult to detect matter, and are charted as a matter of course for the navigational hazards they can pose. This particular dark matter locale was one that gave off strong radiation that caused a sensor blackout within its depths. This was coupled with the addition of a collection of planetoids within, the gravity wells of which would cause further issues to ships passing through, especially if they were flying blind. This made an excellent hiding spot for the Komar, and thanks to this we know precious little about them. They are non-corporeal, and based on trianic energy, which appears in formless wisps of blue-white energy. This pattern registers with a distinct biomatrix, marking them as complex beings. However, they were not recorded in full, so details are sketchy, but they could perceive and traverse through space under their own locomotion, and it is not clear if they lived on the planetoids, but they could not leave the confines of the Dark Matter Nebula, which suggests they are bound to that environment. They were capable of passing through a ship's hull and physical objects, but deflector shielding proved to keep them at bay. They could discharge energy, which would render a target unconscious, causing concussion, but more than that, they could drain a targeted organic of all their bioneural energy, extracting it to feed upon at a later time. However, what's more, they could possess an individual and completely usurp control of them, suppressing their host's mind. This might be detectable with a deep scan of the host's mind, but once possessed, cursory medical scans, transporter filters, and life signs all read as normal. Even changes in their behaviour were hard to spot. On top of this, telepaths are not necessarily able to detect their presence, although the only reference for this was the untrained Kess. When in possession of a host, it seems that the Komar had access to that host's memories and skill set. The being within Tuvok had his access codes, training and operational knowledge of Voyager's systems. Until his usurping had been detected, he was able to falsify a trail and story to lead the entire ship to the Dark Matter Nebula in a way that would not have been possible without Tuvok's experiences. It was even capable of delivering the Vulcan nerve pinch successfully. However, it seems that they are not capable of possessing multiple individuals or jumping between hosts. They are susceptible to magneton flashes that also disorientate most organic lifeforms, but once forced out of the host, the Komar departed the ship immediately, perhaps because it was incompatible with the atmosphere of Voyager. The individual Komar itself was rather dangerous, not only for its manipulation of the crew, but for the energy discharges it could deliver when in its native form. When swarming the ship, they could assault its shielding with the same energy blasts to eventually whittle them down. Their intent was to feed off the crew's bioneural energy for years to come, but that also raises some questions. Dwelling deep within a dark matter nebula, and unable or unwilling to leave, is an unreliable way to gather the sustenance they need, reliant as they are on passing ships that are of a small enough scale to be vulnerable to their attacks. Voyager was a bigger haul than they could manage and the only way for them to succeed was to get the ship hopelessly lost in the nebula, giving them time to break down its shielding. So, how did they get there? They may have been lifeforms native to the Dark Matter realm itself, or even from the planetoids shrouded within the nebula. Or maybe they ended up there from elsewhere. I wonder if their preference for the bioenergy drawn from the minds of others is actually a requirement, or if they are supplemented from some other form of food. I suspect that after Chakotay had his consciousness similarly displaced, that the Komar may have once been corporeal beings themselves, now sundered from their old bodies. Unfortunately, they proved unreceptive to negotiation with the crew when the chance for an alternative source of nourishment was provided, and therefore are unlikely to be visited again. That is all the lore of the Komar, their one appearance focusing more on that air of paranoia that an imposter can create, and their manipulation of the crew to almost deliver them all to a similar fate. The Komar owe all their hunting tactics to deception and ambush, 
from leading the unsuspecting into their trap, then confusing them within their blinding dark matter hunting grounds, until they finally get through to the crew. Who knows how many wreckages of former victims' ships drift in the murk of that dark matter, but surely no one intends to delve back in to find out. Thanks for watching. I've been Rick and I'll see you next time for another lore video. Goodbye.